Namo Buddhaye. This is Abhinav Gulecha. I welcome you to this channel. Uh, I came across this interesting discourse uh, uh, in my study of Buddha's teachings. And this discourse is numbered discourse is 4.200, uh, Love and Hate. Uh, uh, the link to the detailed discourse is given in the description. You can check the detailed discourse. Now, uh, I just thought to make a video on this because love and hate, you know, this is something that we are all stuck in. Right? We love someone, we hate someone, you know, especially youngsters, you know, they get stuck in the love and hate and the breakup and, you know, all these things, right? Even in our, you know, adult life, as we move ahead, you know, friends become enemies, enemies become friends and this cycle keeps continuing. You know, you uh, friend someone on Facebook and then you unfriend someone because someone said something and then things are okay with you and then you um, again uh, 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 make them friends on Facebook. So, Somewhere have you realized, you know, I have realized at least in my life, you know, getting, you know, just wanting to be free from this cycle of, uh, you know, good feelings, bad feelings, love, hatred towards people, right? So this just a uh, discourse was resonated to me. So I'm just making a video on this. Um, so in this discourse, basically Buddha says that uh, mendicants, four things are born out of love and hate. So what four things? So Buddha says love is born of love. Hate is born of love, love is born of hate, hate is born of hate. So, Buddha then further explains how it happens. How is love born of love? That means, Buddha says, it's when someone likes, loves and cares for a person and they see that the others also like that person and love and care that person. So, for that person, you know, the love arises that for those other people, that you know, they are also liking the same person that, that you know, I am liking. Though there is nothing in them, uh, uh, which, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is no good quality in them, still that person starts loving him because th those people love the that person to whom this person loves, right? For example, A loves B and there is a C who also loves B. So, A loves C just because that the C is also has a good feeling about B, right? Second way is how is hate born of love? For example, A loves B. And uh, C dislikes B. So automatically in A there is a dislike that happens for C. Because C is disliking B. And because A is disliking B. Uh, say A likes B. And C dislikes B. So A starts disliking B. So Buddha is just giving situations. How this whole game of love and hate keeps on getting played. You know love breeds hatred. Hatred breeds love. Third is how is love born of hate? It's basically when A dislikes B and C also dislikes B. So, the, so A develops love for C because A dislikes, dislikes C, it's like enemies, enemies are friends. So that is how friendship develops between people because both, both of them dislike B. So A and C both become friends. How is hate born of hate? It's basically when someone dislikes a person others treat that person with liking. So suppose A dislikes B, but C likes A. C dislike, uh, A dislikes B, C likes B. So A automatically develops hatred towards the C because the C is liking the person whom A doesn't like. So Buddha is basically saying how these, you know, love and hate are getting born. So now Buddha says, that at a time, at a time comes when a mendicant realizes the undefiled freedom of heart and freedom by wisdom in this very life, and they having, and they live having realized that with their own insight, due to the ending of defilements. At that time, any love born of love, hate born of love, hate love born of hate, or hate born of hate is given up, cut off at the root, made like a play, palm stump, obliterated and unable to arise in the future. This is called a mendicant who doesn't draw, close or push back or fume or ignite or burn up. Right? So Buddha says that with the practice that we do as per the Buddha's practice of mindfulness that we do, at a time comes that when our defilement, see all this love and hate arises from us, it's because of our latent defilements that get activated. So for example, if some such situation like this happens, that, you know, we see a person who is committing wrong deeds. Automatically, the things, the hatred arises in us. Now, the hatred that we have towards the other person 
he is the hatred that we are carrying us within ourselves right the we don't even know that why the person is committing something a particular act we have our own perceptions and judgments towards anyone who does something like that and that the hatred in the seed form that is in us the latent defilements they spring us spring up and it becomes as hatred so buddha says at a, a time comes when the person becomes so you know free of those defilements that no love or hate can spring up in him he is free he is equanimous right so regardless of you know people good be people being good or people being bad he is equanimous he or she is in equanimous so buddha compares it like becoming a like a palm stump obliterated and unable to rise in future that means it's cut off it cannot rise in future right so that is where we need to take our practice that our practice should be as deep as possible that this love and hate all these games then end you know so that we are not always in this you know roller coaster of love and hate right then buddha further elaborates how does a mendicant draw close it's when a mendicant regards form as self self as having form so buddha says till the time you think you have a permanent self you will have the love and hatred all these things coming because you you it's the permanent self that you feel a self that i have i hate someone i love someone we have to get rid of these ideas this is through the practice of our mindfulness that we have to just realize that right now the feelings of hatred are rising in me Be- noting these feelings of hatred 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 rising in me right or noting that object right or noting the sensations of hatred that are rising when we do all that what happens is that we break this idea of i and this idea of i is the source of all suffering this idea of i when that idea is there of a permanent self that is where the craving arises the aversion arises and as a consequence the suffering arises so we have to just you know break it down to the feeling that is arising in me for example anger it's not that i am angry is that right now anger is arising in me right because of that object this anger is now arising in me that we have to have look at it from that lens and make that our spiritual practice then buddha says how does a mendicant push back it's when someone abuses annoys argues with a mendicant and the mendicant abuses annoys or argues back at him how does a mendicant not push back which is our ideal practice it's when someone abuses annoys or argues with mendicant and the mendicant doesn't abuse so buddha says that when someone gets angry with us we should be mindful we should not get angry it will help us as well as that other person i have made a separate video on this what to do with if someone is angry with you how does a mendicant fume when there is a concept of i am there are concepts i am such i am thus i am fleeting i am lasting mine this is mine that is mine right when these concepts of i and mine will be there then this will these all things will be there we will get angry all these things will happen what our practice has to be that at the time when we are angry even then we should be aware of this anger rising up so maybe outwardly we may be angry but inwardly we will be able to retain our balance and we will not create fresh karma right and we will that anger even if it arises because of our right view and knowing that this is just an impermanent emotion that has arisen in us it will arise and fall arise and fall if we don't give it an our energy so that so now if you think that this can be done at the time when the, that storm arises you are mistaken this has to be a daily practice so one has to be your sitting practice meditation practice another is that as we go about our day we need to keep you know uh our mindfulness level high so that we can you know practice when i am getting attached to things when i am thinking i have an independent self this is our practice and then when we are free of these kind of uh, Uh, wrong views about ourselves then we will be liberated we will get wisdom and we will be liberated so we are all in our journey i just thought to share this particular uh, 
uh, this particular discourse uh, because love and hate is like a very common topic i hope some of you may have resonated with this do please give uh, share comments feedback reflections i want to make it you know the buddha teachings as kind of easy and accessible uh, uh, but whatever little i am trying to i am able to do i am doing but please do give me feedback on how i can improve uh, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya